What up YouTube? Today is November 27th, 2013. Time right now is 4.05 p.m. And uh, this is going to be a project video of me uh, showing you how not to make a printed circuit board at home. So I've been working on this project for a while and uh, today I had a day off. Uh, last night I got overtime which was kind of unexpected but I got home last night at 3 in the morning went to bed slept in late didn't have school today because Thanksgiving so I made it a project day and I finished up laying out a printed circuit board I want to make so I figured I would make a video showing me actually uh, making the printed circuit board so I hope you enjoy okay so this is how all my projects start out once I've done experimenting and I know what I want to do I go and I lay out a hand-drawn schematic um, I'm there's a big learning curve to the schematic software that you can find variously throughout the internet and uh, I just never sat down and put enough time to do it I always find it a little easier just to draw them by hand so I go and I draw it out by hand everything I need and uh, this is just my way of drawing schematics it's probably not uh, you know professional at all I just draw the chips here and the pins and where they connect to the different chips and then I do have a little op amp circuit here and uh, there's my power supply so once I get this drawn out then I go to uh, I use Copper Connection, which you can get on robotroom.com. It's a free program made by Dave Cook, which is the same guy who made robot building for a beginner's book and the intermediate book. And he came out with his free software. And uh, software is pretty easy. You just lay it out physically. You know, it's not like Eagle where it would automatically generate it. You gotta lay everything out on your own. So, for the past two weeks on my free time, I've been laying this out. It gets a little daunting, and I squeezed uh, AT uh, Mega 328, and uh, this is a motor driver board and an op amp circuit. Squeezed it on a five by three inch board, and uh, I uh, at one point things got so messy I just completely deleted it and started from scratch. When things start getting messy, you know it's good to start from scratch. So the green, let me turn off. This is what I'm actually gonna print, the green. And I only print single-sided circuit boards. I'm not advanced enough to print double-sided. And then anything double-sided, which is the red, I just manually go and put jumpers in, you know? So, and I try to avoid to have as uh, few jumpers as possible, but Today I uh, finished up on the circuit, circuit board, and then after I finish up, I go and I sit down with my uh, schematics, and I go by each trace individually, and uh, when I go by each trace, I look at it like this, check the jumpers, because once I was look, doing a, I, I guess they call it proofing, a proofreading, once I was proofreading a board with the jumpers on, and I had, uh, a trace underneath the jumper that wasn't supposed to be there and it shorted out and I didn't catch it because the red jumpers which is the top side of the board was covering it up so I go by every single trace with my schematics and you always find something wrong so it's always good before you print it you know before you make it permanent go through and double check and I made a big mistake on this off amp circuit up here which I'm glad I double checked this time. So, I got done doing that, and now I printed it out. So let me go over here to do a better light. You gotta have good project food. On a project day, you gotta have project food. So, I wanna take this to Kinko's and get a transparency made of it. Okay, so I just came back. Got my transparency, 80 cents for a transparency. And it uh, came out pretty good. There is, there's a line, you might not be able to see it, a line right down through here. And there's another one right down through here. But just going over both of the images, you know, close up, 
it just seems like you know you're picking out little things but I think I'm gonna go with this one just because this line right here seems to be a lot darker so I'm gonna cut this one out and uh, this is the one we're gonna use to expose the um, board okay so I like to get my developer mixture already before I expose so this is a uh, I use MG chemicals positive developer uh, you put it's one ten ratio one part of this ten parts uh, water and I just estimate and uh, I went and I these are you can get trays for a dollar so I got this for a dollar I had bigger ones but I wanted a smaller one so I would waste less chemicals so uh, 110 ratio okay so that's my 110 ratio and I just estimate it to tell you the truth I'm not really exactly this kind of thing but it doesn't take much just enough so you can submerge the board because right after you're done exposing I'm gonna bring it over here submerge it and then uh, wipe it with this foam brush okay this next step is gonna be hard for me to show so I'm just gonna tell you what I'm gonna do so this is a picture frame and this is the pre sensitized board. So I open up the picture frame. I put this up against the glass with the ink facing down against the cardboard, which will be against the circuit board. And uh, that's why you, you print it out as a mirror image. So this is printed out as a mirror image, so the ink is on this side. So this, I'm going to put the board underneath it. I'm going to scotch tape it so it doesn't move and sandwich it in the picture frame. Then I'm gonna run over here, put it underneath my uh, desk lamp. Uh, this is just a T5, I forget what the wattage of the bulb is. And I'm gonna let it expose that way. Nothing, nothing special here. Okay, so I'm exposing the board right now. I started my stopwatch. Now the directions say five to eight minutes. From my previous experience, I always hug the five minute mark so probably five and a half to six minutes that's when I'll pull it out and dunk it in the photo solution and uh, I always have a hard time lining up the board as you can see it's <laughs> it's not lined up perfectly but all the artwork is on the board so uh, that's what matters most all the artwork is on the board so uh, see you in five minutes Okay, 5 minutes and 45 seconds was the magic number. I pulled it off and now I'm taking it out of the picture frame. And get this guy's tape off. And straight into the photo solution. And now you just rub it and uh, instantly you see the you see the image in the in the solution. And we got a good exposure. So, let me take a real quick look, make sure nothing, because I did have some kind of thin, okay that's good, then you rinse it off immediately. So, I'm always leery of how long to expose it for, but... Five minutes and 45 seconds does the trick. And you also don't want to leave it in that solution too much or you'll end up rinsing off the etch solution. So I just run it under cold water. Make sure I get all that uh, developer off of it. And uh, yeah, that was a good expose. So you see it? So far, so good. Now we gotta actually etch the copper off. Okay, so I got the etching solution in this uh, tub, and I got some warm water in the bottom tub. And there's the board. I have this piece of tape so I can hold it. And I learned this trick from another guy online, but I just kind of float it. Load it in there like this. 
Now usually I don't even use the warm water on the bottom because it's so hot at my uh, apartment. Like this lab gets hot with the sun, but it's fall, the sun went down and it's extremely cool. And then I also have a 100 watt light bulb. Surprisingly just holding a 100 watt light bulb like this will also heat it up. So you just keep on agitating, agitating it around till uh, you see the image etch out good. And uh, I want to put the camera down because this part gets messy. You want to be careful of this ferric chloride because it'll stain anything. So uh, see you on the flip side. Welcome back. So there it is. Now, remember how I said there was lines in the printing? Well, if you zoom up real close, some of these traces have, you can see where that line was. So there's a possibility that some of these traces might be broken. But it's nothing that a little solder fill will fix. Uh, some people actually tin these boards. That would probably help with that problem also. But uh, I don't have, I don't usually tin them. So only uh, until I build it, that's when I'll find out if we have any broken. This isn't the, you know, it isn't perfect, but it'll do. It will do. And now comes the daunting task of uh, drilling all the holes out. Okay, this is the part where having good equipment makes all the difference. Um, I have this Dremel mini drill press. A lot of bad reviews on it, but uh, it's well worth the money, in my opinion. And uh, it'll make drilling all these holes as easy as humanly possible because when you have such a small uh, drill bit it's impossible to do it without any type of drill press so you definitely want to find some type of drill press that will hold a small drill bit so let's drill away okay so all the holes are drilled and this board is a uh, finish now I just had to solder all the components on. I hope you enjoyed this video. This is how I created my how I create my printed circuit boards. You know, everyone does it a little differently, but uh, it might not be perfect, but you know, it works. Gets the job done. Um, in the past, I've had had circuit boards with bad traces in it, like I said, uh, but I was looking at this one more. In, detail I don't think this one has a bad trace but uh, time will tell there is up here you can't see it because of the camera there is a little it got etched away too much mostly because of that line that was in the transparency from the printing but uh this is it hope you enjoyed this video